The Smoky Mountains are very special to me. It's where so much of my heart and soul come from. It's my home. But I want you to know that all the things you love about the mountains are still there. We have all those same friendly people and the same service, the same wonderful places. You should come on back and see what we are. Because the Smoky Mountains are definitely special. So come on back. We're here and better than ever. Please welcome Pete Owens, Vice President Marketing and Public Relations, The Dollywood Company. Good morning, TEA. I can uh, promise you I'm not Dolly Parton. I'm missing a couple of assets. I don't wear wigs. I don't wear five-inch heels, as far as you know. And uh, I will say that uh, she is very proud of the Classic Award that we are receiving this weekend. Um, she uh, is very proud of the work that we've been able to do through the years. Uh, I've worked for her for uh, now uh, 20 seasons. This is my 20th season. Uh, and she is an incredible, inspirational leader. Um, but I will tell you that uh, TEA gave us an interesting challenge. I have about uh, 25 minutes to try to explain to you what we've been doing in the Great Smoky Mountains um, since, honestly, 1960. Dollywood's been around since 1986, and we'll talk about that, but uh, there has been a sense of place and a uh, sense of discovery in that region uh, going back to uh, 1960 with the first attraction there. So how do you boil that down into 25 minutes as to what we do, how we do, uh, and, what the, and what those key things are? So I put together a little formula of what we have, uh, what we really think works for us um, when we create attractions, when we create experiences, when we try to drive uh, attendance, frankly. Uh, and provide great guest service. First one is sense of place, and we'll talk about that. Authentic storytelling is another. Uh, and that, both of those things go back to 1960. But we have a higher purpose. There are things that we do, and we do them for a reason, and I'll explain those. And if we do all of those things and we do them well, we'll have success, and we'll have repeat visitation. So it all started with the Great Smoky Mountains. And no, that's not a Photoshop picture. That's really what the Smokies look like on a dawn coming over the ridge off Clingman's Dome. So it is a gorgeous area of the country. And if you go back to 1960, 1957 actually, the Robbins brothers that have an attraction called Tweetsie Railroad in North Carolina built the first attraction on, the, on our property. It was called Rebel Railroad. They laid the rails that we, we currently use, we still use today, and bought our first engine that's here, which is Cinderella. And it was, as you would see by the name, a Civil War-themed attraction. Um, and they used to have guys on horseback, and they used to ride up through the mountains and uh, follow the train, and it was Civil War-themed. That lasted about five years and then Art Modell purchased the property. He, uh, if those of you know who Art Modell is, so he owned the Baltimore, or he owns the Baltimore Ravens now, he used to own the Cleveland Browns. Um, he likes trains, so we bought a train there, rethemed the area as Gold Rush Junction, turned it into a cowboy-themed area, and operated it as Gold Rush Junction for uh, about seven years until 1975. In 1975, a couple of brothers from Missouri were looking to expand their business out of Branson, Missouri. And Jack and Pete Hershend purchased the property from our model and turned it into eventually Silver Dollar City, Tennessee. Operated it the first year as Gold Rush. So the photo that's on, uh, I guess it's year left, um, is Jack Hershen and a guy named Ted Miller, and Ted will come into our story again in just a minute. But Ted was the general manager of the property. Uh, that's the governor and the lieutenant governor at the time, and the guy all the way on the left is a guy named Shad Heller, who was the uh, uh, blacksmith at Silver Dollar City in Branson and really the face of 
of Silver Dollar City. Um, they added music to the park. They started adding highly themed attractions. Uh, the flooded mine is down there on the, on the uh, bottom right, and then again on the left here, which is really the first of the highly themed attractions that Silver Dollar City brought into that area. Uh, but they told Smoky Mountain stories and mountain stories. They saw a real correlation between what they were doing in Branson and what they were doing, uh, what they could do in, uh, at uh, Silver Dollar City, Tennessee. So you fast forward to 1982, Dolly is uh, at one of her peaks because she seems to have a career that continues to reach uh, peaks. There are some valleys, but a lot of the time, most of the time, it's it, their peaks. And she was on uh, a Barbara Walter special. And to surprise Ted Miller, the general manager of Silver Dollar City and the Hershens, she said, uh, she told uh, Barbara Walters, um, I want to go back home and I want to build a theme park in my home area. I want it to be a Smoky Mountain Disneyland. And that started some wheels moving and started some people thinking. And she had some investors and she was going to build right outside of Gatlinburg, which Ted Miller and the Hershens knew would be a major competition for Silver Dollar City. And they came to an agreement. So in November of 1985, uh, they came to an agreement, created the Dollywood Company, and uh, that partnership with the Hershens being the operating partner of that business and Dolly being the creative partner um, has stood the test of time. Um, the partnership continues now with Hershen Family Entertainment, now that Jack and Pete uh, are retired, and it's, we're now in, I guess, Gen 6, Gen 5, Gen 6 of the Hershen family. Um, but it's been a very, very fruitful relationship. She brought some really interesting um, authenticity to the park. So you look at her and you say, well, you know, what's authentic about that? Her heart is so authentic, and her love for the Smokies and for the people of the Smokies uh, it's incredible. And that allows our team at Dollywood to be inspired to do the things that we do. That also allows her a creative outlet to be able to tell some stories that she's wanted to tell. And I'll introduce you to one of those here in a minute. So Dollywood today, from that one theme park uh, that we had that started in 1986 and an attraction that started back in 1960, uh, we have the Dollywood theme park uh, we've got Dollywood Splash Country Water Park, both award-winning parks. We were blessed to win the Applause Award for Dollywood in 2012, and we continue to try to improve both of those properties. Uh, in 2007, we added a resort business that was uh, Dollywood Smoky Mountain Cabins. Uh, we continue to run that business and to manage a portfolio of cabins for families that come to the area. We're not talking Tennessee Mountain Home, we're talking luxury cabins. So it's been a pretty successful business for us. In 2015, we added uh, Dollywood's Dream War Resort and Spa. Um, we have a dinner theater attraction business um, that we operate through a company called World Choice Investments. Um, that is Dolly Parton Stampede. We have one in Pigeon Forge and one in Branson, Missouri. Pirate's Voyage, which um, is uh, a pretty similar um, concept, but with pirates instead of guys on horseback. And uh, it is uh, in Myrtle Beach, and we're opening one in Pigeon Forge this year. And then we just purchased some additional theaters uh, in uh, the Pigeon Forge market. So that takes their total number of dinner theaters up to seven. But from a heart standpoint, we also have a very vibrant um, nonprofit side. So I don't know how many uh, of you here have heard of the Dollywood Foundation or the Imagination Library Program. Anybody? So some of you, okay. So for the few that, uh, so the few that are out there that don't know, we started the Dollywood Foundation around the same time that we started Dollywood. And in, uh, and in the mid part of the 1990s, we started a program called the Imagination Library. In essence, it provides a book a month to children from the time that they're born or they sign up to the program. Um, and 
we give them a book a month for free, mailed to them in their home uh, until they enter kindergarten. So maximum number of books, 60. Uh, they're all age appropriate. Um, and that business, uh, that foundation, that uh, avocation for the folks that are in the uh, Imagination Library um, has expanded globally. Uh, it's in every state in the US. It's in every province of Canada. It is uh, in the UK. It's in Australia. It's in several of the former and current UK commonwealths. Um, we distribute 1.2 million books a month. We've distributed a total of 117 million books to this date, uh, and we continue to expand. So it's a great program, but the Dollywood Foundation also does some other things. The spot you saw at the beginning was um, a spot that we did with Dolly. Dolly felt compelled to do after the wildfires in the Great Smoky Mountains in 2016. So um, when that happened, um, there was a great deal of devastation around the Gatlinburg area and especially in the county around the cities. And we created something called the My People Fund. So the Dollywood Foundation managed it for the families that virtually lost everything in the fires. For the first uh, five months of the program, we distributed $1,000 a month to them. And then in the last month, so on the sixth month, we provided them a bonus of $5,000 more. The idea was we would give them a hand up. Dolly wanted to make sure that she knew that they'd be getting Red Cross assistance. She knew that they would be getting assistance from FEMA. The idea was they should have money in their pocket to do what they want to do with it. And they did. Um, some of it nefarious, some of it really, really positive, but it was a great program. Uh, we, had an, we did a telethon to raise money. We raised a total of about $13.5 million. And uh, that money um, carried through to an organization called Mountain Tough, which helps to provide ongoing counseling services and needs for those that are there. So that gives you an idea of who we are right now. Um, so back to the formula. Um, sense of place and authentic storytelling. Take a look at this. For decades, Dollywood has welcomed families to its parks and resorts to focus on their most beloved treasure, one another. Here in the Great Smoky Mountains, families gather together, spending days and nights experiencing fun-filled adventures together in a place where eagles soar high in the sky, and thrilling laughter and the sound of music soars even higher where the whistle of the Dollywood Express treks families along the mountainside, where families feel at home while away from home. It's a place for families to create memorable experiences that they can come back and repeat time and time again. In 2019, Dollywood, as a leader in the theme park industry, will once again expand its footprint, creating a new land for families. It's Dollywood like never before. Welcome to Wildwood Grove. Wildwood Grove is a Smoky Mountains adventure like never before. There's so much to explore inside Wildwood Grove. Come explore, play and imagine together with your family at Dollywood in 2019. Okay, so nice marketing piece, right? But just gives you an idea of kind of where we went, uh, what we'd been doing about bringing families closer together. Uh, but we started to create this idea of um, stories that came out of Dolly's imagination or things that were part of her childhood as we've continued to evolve the business. So in her own words, this is really what uh, Wildwood Grove is to her. When we created Wildwood Grove, I really wanted it to be a place where kids and parents could experience what we did as children. Because when you're proud of where you're from, you want to share that with people. It really takes a lot to develop an entire land. It was over 250,000 cubic yards of dirt that we moved. This 
is our transition into our existing park. You come through a log portal, you can't even see the end of the land. There's a sense of discovery around every turn. A lot of little children live in big cities and subdivisions and they don't really get that experience about being out in the wild. So I've tried to create something where I want them to experience what I did, but I think it's a place where parents can also kind of reflect and refresh and just fantasize and use their imagination. About this point in Wildwood Grove, the guests will be able to see the Wildwood tree, they'll be able to hear the laughter at the creek, They'll also be able to see Dragonflyer, and then they'll really begin to understand some of that special essence of Wildwood Grove. We're getting the opportunity to create this iconic centerpiece for this land. It's this huge tree. It lives in different ways throughout the day. And in the night, the butterflies come alive with an LED show. Music and lighting effects and this beautiful canvas of butterflies, obviously iconic to Dollywood, are coming alive. As parents, we know that time passes way too fast. We want to maximize every moment. And as a mom, I can't wait for the opportunity for me and my daughter to sit here and enjoy Wildwood Grove and build those moments together and have those memories. So, sense of place, authentic storytelling. The attractions you see that were in that particular, uh, that are in that particular land, those 11 uh, themed uh, uh, experiences that are part of Wildwood Grove are authentic to Dolly. So you ride on the back of a, of a black bear. You're able to fly with a dragonfly. Uh, you're able to uh, experience this big wildwood tree that's covered in hundreds and hundreds of these uh, internally lit butterflies that will do, uh, that will tell those Smoky Mountain stories as was described in the video. So it's about the Smokies, it's authentic to Dolly or to the area itself. It's a great project for us. It's obviously the biggest project that we've done for this year and one that I wanted to use as an example of how we do what we do uh, in regard to those two elements. One other project I'll show you just quickly is a project we did in 2016, which is Lightning Rod. So first question for a lot of you that, that don't know uh, much about where we're from is why on earth would you do a hot rod um, uh, roller coaster? How does that fit what you do with music and crafts and, and the beauty of the area? Well, for those of you that don't know, in addition to country music, that was grown out of the Upper, Upper East Tennessee part, so was Moonshine and so was NASCAR. So it fits into this area of this niche of storytelling that's part of an area of the park that we call Jukebox Junction, which is what Dolly's hometown looked like in the 19, early 1960s when she was a kid. So it fit in, it provided us an opportunity to use, a, again, another unique um, platform within uh, the industry. So this is an RMC. Uh, coaster. It's the first wooden launch coaster uh, that was built in, uh, in the U.S. and uh, I think anywhere, um, and, and maybe the only one with the, some of the difficulty we had. But uh, it's a great ride it, itself, and the team that we have from uh, our Hershen team that's here, Bob Shreve uh, and Andy and Laura uh, and Sam now uh, from Hershen Studios were a big part of doing all of this. I'm gonna hop over the video because I wanna to get to um, the other side of what I'd like to talk about. This is just another shot of Dollywood. This is from a drop tower that we have that's up in an area we call Wilderness Pass. That's other good examples of storytelling in attractions. Mystery Mine is what you see in front. Again, used a very unique um, ride product. Uh, that's a Gerslauer Eurofighter coaster that's inside a building. We utilized its strengths, which was the vertical lift and the vertical drop, to tell a story of mining, which is also a key Smoky Mountain element. Um, and it's a, quite a thrilling ride. Wild Eagle is on the right. That was the first wing coaster that B&M built in the US. Uh, tells a great story because we have the largest eagle sanctuary at the park um, in the US 
for non-releasable bald eagles, and it helps us tell that eagle story because once families learn about eagles, they then can fly like an eagle on wild eagle. And then all the way in back, you see um, the green track that's in back is Fire Chaser Express. Again, another uh, Gerslauer partnership that we did that tells a great story about the volunteer fire departments uh, around the Smokies that really took care of the national park um, before uh, the Park Service really took over. So just some good examples. But none of it matters without our higher purpose. So in 2008, uh, when, the, when the recession started, we started to see a change in customers and how customers were reacting to us and how they were reacting to one another. So we wanted to come up with the why so that we could try to solve that problem. We knew we were doing really good things. We knew we were telling really good stories, but what was going on? And this is what we found out was going on and how we could fill the need. Who can make sense of the world today? We've become more connected as a society, but what have we connected to? We're seeing less of our lemonade stands our front porches, and our Sunday drives. We measure quality time in minutes. And the nine to five, it no longer exists. We're together, but where's the togetherness? It can seem like we fell asleep and woke to a less friendly world. A world that doesn't all share the same values. And you know what? It's taking a toll on what we've always believed in. Deep down, we long for just a little more humanity. When we saw our children while there was still light outside, where we gathered at the town square, supported the local mom and pop store, who actually were someone's mom and pop, came together as one at the Friday night football game, looked out for our neighbors, and welcome new ones with a home-cooked meal. We didn't need to wear Life is Good t-shirts because it was good already. We can't change this new world of ours, but we can ask more of it. We can hold it to a higher standard, our standard. We can choose to make more time, family time. We can seek experiences that validate our belief in what is genuinely good real and important in this life. Authentic experiences. Those moments filled with charm and character. Moments that give us an opportunity to love each other. Build a foundation or simply pass on a tradition. Moments that give us what we so long for that we once feared was lost. And where the love for what we do comes back 100 different ways many of which we never even see, but will carry on long after the rush of adrenaline has subsided. Are moments like this still possible? You better believe it. So this really built into, this particular version of this really built into that once we figured out who we were and what we were doing, um, this, this was um, something that really transcended just Dollywood and, it, and we discovered that Silver Dollar City, Stone Mountain Park, Wild Adventures also could take advantage of some of these key elements to be able to work. So we saw that what is a, basically a manifesto video that and saw what the issues were around the world and how things had changed post-recession. So we knew what we had done previously was successful, but how could we translate into this new consciousness? So we started to look at our brand and our branding, and we decided that if the, the world would be a better place if, which is what Ogilvy Mather calls the big ideal, um, more time was family time. 
The one thing we saw is that the closer, the more connected we were from a technological standpoint, the more disconnected we were as people. So in what we were building and what we were doing and those authentic stories we were telling and that sense of place that we had been uh, utilizing over the last, you know, at this point now, going back to Silver Dollar City, um, you know, 30 years, 35 years, um, what could we do and how could we adjust what we do and how could we redefine ourselves? We ended up landing on this master brand positioning. I'm not going to read it to you because you can all read, but the key is that we combine these things that I've been talking about and we emphasize that the difference at Dollywood and what we do is love. The love from our guests, the love from our hosts, the love of what we do, and the feeling that you get when you go to the parks. So this spot really exemplifies that. Surrounded by the spirit of Christmas, it truly is the most wonderful time of year. Make Dollywood a holiday family tradition. So that spot is about two or three years old, but I love it because it really exemplifies what we're trying to do. It doesn't talk about the fact, you know, we have five million lights, seven holiday shows, lighted Christmas parade that runs nightly, uh, you know, a, a huge Christmas tree that does a nightly show. None of those things. It's about families, it's about connectivity, it's about making memories with them. So I'm gonna hop over this video so that I can stay on time and talk about our hosts and how we do what we do because they are our special sauce. They are what makes us different, what that experience is. When Joel Mamby was the CEO of Hershen Family Entertainment, now Hershen Enterprises, he said all the time, the guest experience can only rise as high as the experience of the host. Shep Hyken is a you know, customer service guru and he talks about continually, uh, continuing to exceed the expectations of, of our employees, in our case, our hosts, so that they can exceed the expectations of their customers, in our case, our guests. And we've been doing this for a long time. This is what we call the arrow model that comes out of the traditions of Jack and Pete Hershend and has really uh, evolved into the program that we have that we call Love Works. You can see in the center of the bullseye, the guest is always at the center. But the target of that is to have them create memories worth repeating and at a higher level from a vision level to bring families closer together. The tip of that arrow are the hosts. We want to be a great place to work for great people. We try to handle that through a servant leadership program. Uh, this, the shaft of the arrow was really the business element of it with safety being at its core. And then the servant leadership is really on uh, the fletching of the arrow. I think it's an excellent visual representation of what it is that we try to do. But what is servant leadership? How do we do what we do? Well, every leader within our company is gold and is evaluated by their direct reports to these principles. Some of you may recognize them as becoming uh, as the definition of love from 1 Corinthians, but they are just tried and true principles of how you treat one another, how you do the things that uh, you need to do to, uh, to care for people. I have a team of about 35 people that I work for, and I want to make sure that I am patient and kind 
and trusting and unselfish with them and truthful and forgiving and dedicated. Because if I do that for them, then they will do that for their direct reports and then they will do that for the guest. So that's really what we're focused on. So Dolly has recognized through the years how great our hosts are. As she travels the world, the quote you see that's up there is, I mean, she literally, that's the first thing that most people say. People there are so nice. They're so nice. And we have such a varied number of hosts from uh, different uh, generational cohorts. We have a lot of greatest generation folks that are in their 70s. Um, we have folks that are uh, boomers. We've got folks that are uh, millennials. We've got folks that are Gen Xers. And all of that, try, we try to draw all of that together um, by using Love Works. So just a couple of quickie points here. We've got more than 3,000 employees. It's actually closer to 4,000. Uh, our average tenure of our hosts is seven years. But 5% of our hosts have worked for us for more than 20 years. That retention is very important to who we are and what we do. We're gold from within to promote 70% of the, of the hosts that we have. So do we go in for executive level and people like that from outside? Absolutely. We try to find the best talent we can, but oftentimes the best talent is inside the company. Um, we try to be the preferred employer in the area. We've got a healthcare center that, is, that we provide to all of our hosts and their families after they've worked 100 hours. It's 15 bucks. You can do pretty much anything there that you could do um, at your local doctor or at the emergency room, testing and all of that kind of stuff. And it's become the primary physician for most of our hosts. We have a park perks program that allows them, even seasonal workers, to do everything in the area for free. Uh, and we have, in the last couple of years, have provided benefits now to all full-time hosts, regardless if they're seasonal full-time or, uh, and, and that really has benefited them a great deal. Uh, and then as I said, as leaders, we are all gold on these servant leadership qualities. And I can tell you that, and the guys that are sitting over there can also tell you that uh, there's a greater chance of someone not making it within our company if they don't adhere to those principles than if they're not particularly good stewards of money. We can coach that and can teach that. This is something that is character related. So I'm right at my time, but, uh, and I'll hop over this last one, but uh, I think I've got a couple of minutes for questions if uh, anybody's got questions. The lights are difficult, so uh, just raise your hand if you've got one. I haven't done that good a job explaining who we are in 20 minutes, so go. I think you got one back here in the middle. Thank you. You talked about having all the different generational types of guests. How are these generational differences affecting the kinds of attractions and, and what these kinds of guests get excited about? Well, from a, I mean, from a guest, so I was speaking more specifically about hosts that we have, but I can, I'll address both. So the host standpoint, um, we often use, it's an interesting thing to watch somebody of the greatest generation um, mentor somebody that is in the, uh, say, is a, a centennial that comes in on a seasonal workforce or, comes in, or that's a millennial and is their boss. And we try to put those things together, and the amalgam is, is really quite a neat thing to watch. And it raises the level of, of guest service that we have for the folks that come to the area. Now, from an overall attraction standpoint, yeah, I mean, generations are changing. We are a, a, we're a park that really is focused on the entire family. You'll see mom and dad, little kids like you do out here. Uh, I mean, I ate at downtown Disney last night. There are crumb crunchers running all over the place. And little kids, certainly, but it's mom and dad, the kids, aunts and uncles, grandparents, great-grandparents. Uh, we have a really interesting mix of product. Uh, we do a ton of shows. 
So we have a really, really strong show product. We, we try to build attractions that are family-oriented and are not necessarily super thrill rides. Now, Lightning Rod is an exception, but things that are really more family-oriented. We try to emphasize things like our craft program or our eagles or uh, our train ride, things that they can all do together as a family, and that's really what we target. And then when these guys sit down and they do designs, it's about trying to associate uh, maybe uh, you know, an e-ticket e attraction with something that is um, more kid, family-oriented, so we don't separate families. What you often see at other parks that are more teen-oriented is if they're coming as a family, mom and dad are here with the littler kids and then the teens take off. At our park, it does happen, but, we, but most of the time they stay together as a unit, and that's really what we're looking to do. Okay. The lights are a little glaring, but there you go. Thank you for your time and thank you uh, for your attention. <laughs>